Alrighty, party peoples of the interwebs, Viva Fry, former Montreal litigator turned current Florida rumbler in my home office, doing something of a follow-up on yesterday's vlog. Yesterday, as at the time of shooting this vlog, I believe it's August 7, 2024. Yesterday, I broke down X's lawsuit against the WFA and a bunch of other co-defendants and potentially unnamed co-conspirators. The WFA, for those of you who don't know what it is, stands for the World Federation of Advertisers. They are a a proud partner with the WEF, that is the World Economic Forum. The WFA has a subsidiary committee of sorts, an initiative that they started called the Global Alliance for Responsible Media, GARM. And as I explained yesterday when breaking down X's lawsuit against the WFA and the other defendants, the Global Allegiance Alliance of Responsible Media basically groups together 90% of the ad spend online. They proudly boast this on the WFA website. That's something like $900 billion that the GARM represents by way of its monopoly over advertising spends. What the WFA does is, through GARM and its initiative, tries to impose certain safety protocols on the platforms on which advertisers advertise. And if those platforms don't enable certain safety protocol, well then the GARM, exploiting, abusing of its monopoly, will say, we're not going to advertise on those platforms unless you adhere to certain safety protocols. If it were only an issue of safety protocols, there wouldn't be much of an issue here. As I explained when I broke down X's lawsuit against the WFA and the other defendants, Unilever in particular, as is alleged in the lawsuit, it actually has not everything to do with one someone think of the children safety protocol on these platforms because Twitter and Rumble, and we're going to get to it in particular, have very good safety protocols on their platforms to ensure that advertising is not running against offensive, violent, whatever content. As I explained in the lawsuit, it's one of the most shocking allegations in X's lawsuit against the WFA. You had Unilever saying, we want to make sure that Twitter is taking care of overtly partisan content, specifically the Hunter Biden laptop expose. This was Unilever trying to use its monopoly power through the GARM WFA alliance to coerce social media companies to censor quote, overtly partisan conduct. This lawsuit is something of an uphill battle because it's based on Sherman Act antitrust violations. The idea being that the WFA, which basically boasts having a monopoly, 90% of all online spending in the order of $900 billion, is exploiting of that monopoly, not just to surreptitiously coerce censorship of social media platforms, but also necessarily causing the prices of advertising to increase as a result of excluding certain platforms from advertising ad spends. They do this notwithstanding the fact that it's against the interests of the advertisers, both in terms of paying more for what they're getting and also being excluded from cost-friendly platforms that actually have very, very good safety protocols such as Twitter and Rumble. So this lawsuit is out there. It's an uphill battle as I explained, but it's fascinating to see what's going on. And I then had Chris Pavlovsky on my channel for an interview, the CEO of Rumble, and we talked about this. And I'll show you the clip at the end of this video where when we were talking about GARM, Global Alliance for Responsible Media, the WFA, the World Federation of Advertisers, who are a partner of the WEF, who have actively engaged in what I will call election interference, as we've seen in the allegations of X's lawsuit, Chris Pavlovsky comes out and says, look, we've been disclosing some of these emails, at least two. One was from Dunkin' Donuts, saying we don't want to advertise on right-wing content. The other was from, I forget who it was from now, doesn't really matter. Chris Pavlovsky revealed some of these emails, which say, we don't want to advertise on right-wing platforms. We don't want to advertise on content that hosts Steven Crowder. The only problem being Steven Crowder is also on YouTube. But Pavlovsky comes out and discloses a couple of these emails. Rumble is also suing the WFA on a very similar basis as X. And its lawsuit is equally as compelling. And they go through how WFA exploits its monopoly to coerce pressure, censorship that has nothing to do with safety protocols and how they abuse of their monopoly power to basically boycott, illegally boycott, because they're abusing of monopoly powers under the Sherman Act, illegally boycott platforms such as Rumble and Twitter, not because of any actual safety issues, but because of politics. In the interview, Chris Pavlovsky says, we sued them and the rats are jumping ship. He actually didn't use that analogy. I did because it's what's happening right now. But Chris said, I don't think Garm is going to be around 
by the end of the year. It's just his educated guess. I'll show you the clip at the end of this video. He predicted that Garm would not be around by the end of the year because they've got something to hide and it's quite clear because he is only scratching the tip of the iceberg with the emails that he's disclosed. He suspected that under the hood of Garm would be a lot more dirty laundry, a lot more very compromising or indicting emails correspondence that would show wrongdoing by this agency and lo and behold the news of the day today august 7 2024 garm is disbanding overnight after having been sued by rumble and by x garm is disbanding disaffiliating whatever you want to call it from the wfa the wfa the world federation of advertisers is now saying we're done with garm this initiative is over pack it up and head home people not after they've actively interfered in the 2020 election by unilever in particular wanting to make sure that platforms were suppressing overtly partisan conduct i.e the hunter biden laptop expose they are breaking up disbanding whatever the initiative is over and it's an amazing thing. Rats jumping the ship is one thing. But you damn well know that if they're not deleting evidence now, because I don't know that they could easily be deleting emails, because as I explained yesterday, part of what led to this was the House Judiciary Committee Oversight Committee investigating into this. And the House Judiciary Committee came to the conclusion that what Garm was doing via the WFA was likely illegal. But apparently they've been placed on not a litigation hold, but a document preservation hold from about a month ago. So it might be less likely that they're actively just out there digitally shredding emails, you know, using bleach bit, wiping it clean or smashing it with hammers as Hillary Clinton did. It's less likely that they might be doing that, but that they might be disbanding their activities because with each passing day that Garm participates in what it understood was an unlawful boycott, they would be accruing the damages that they might be ordered to pay to both Rumble and Twitter. Officially, you go read it. It's in the Business Insider. It's wild. Announced that they're done. The GARM initiative is over. Whether or not they are now in alt control delete mode or they're just in minimize the damages mode, who knows? But Chris Pavlovsky predicted this. Rumble and Twitter are going after them. And it would seem that Chris was right on the money they are disbanding now. One thing that's worth highlighting in this is that yesterday, for a brief moment in time, and I don't know how these things work, the trending hashtags on Twitter, and I'm not going to make any accusations, but I do have some serious questions. Yesterday, after Chris Pavlovsky disclosed in particular the Dunkin' Donuts email, where they didn't want to advertise on right-wing content, the hashtag was trending, at least according to CatTurd, CatTurd on Twitter, if you don't know who he is, CatTurd2, sorry, at CatTurd2. Apparently, Boycott Dunkin' Donuts was number one trending on Twitter for a brief moment in time and then absolutely disappeared. And some people are suspecting, accusing Musk, Yaccarino, Twitter of manually or artificially killing that trending hashtag, potentially for the purposes of salvaging bridges with Dunkin' Donuts for future advertising. I wouldn't go there right away. I don't know how these trending hashtags actually work, but I did see it in real time to some extent that it was there. And then even when you put in hashtag boycott Dunkin' Donuts, nothing would come up, which sent curious. And I still have that open question to Elon Musk in Twitter. Was the hashtag killed? And if so, why? And if not, how to one explain what happened there. But the bottom line, it started trending. There is a pushback. People are getting fed up with companies that say, we don't want to advertise with right-wing content. Bullcrap. It's bullcrap because you have Cadillac sponsoring movies in which villains do villainous things. You have, Diageo was the other one. Diageo saying, we don't want to advertise on these platforms with Steven Crowder yet. Bullcrap. Diageo sells alcohol. Black Label in particular has been in a bunch of unsavory movies. The idea that these agencies would say, our clients don't want to advertise on a platform that has Steven Crowder or Alex Jones. Bullcrap because advertisers want to be where the eyeballs are. Save and accept if it's an actual decapitation video, which is actually what led to Adpocalypse 1.0 on YouTube. Setting aside that, advertisers go to controversial movies. There's product placement in movies like Saw, The Hills Have Eyes, The Human Centipede, maybe not as much. Advertisers want to be where the eyeballs are within certain parameters of decency. And Alex Jones and Steven Crowder do not surpass those bounds of decency but they sure as hell can sell products. And so you had this Dunkin' Donuts boycott hashtag trending because people are fed up and they're going to vote with their dollars. And advertisers are then going to realize that not only is it against our interest not to advertise here, but the people who boycott us afterwards will make us pay twice. One, for not selling them the products and two, for boycotting them in the first place for political ideologies. So that's where things are at right now. Rumble and Twitter are making a difference in the world and I'm partial to Rumble, but they are walking the walk and talking the talk and 
Chris Pavlovsky, you know, he disclosed two emails and overnight, Garm Initiative done. He disclosed two emails and overnight, Boycott Dunkin' Donuts was trending, if only for a brief moment in time. But Garm is done and they're not necessarily going to get away with it, but we'll see what happens after this if they destroy evidence. We'll see where the House Judiciary Committee goes now. This immediate disbanding after the lawsuit is an outright admission of guilt. It's an admission of wrong. If what they were doing was not wrong, was good, and was totally clean and kosher, why would they disband it overnight after two lawsuits, which would presumably get to some form of discovery and still might, because the lawsuits don't end because this initiative is over, the entities are still there, discoveries can still be had. Why would they end this overnight if what they were doing was clean and in the best interest of the internet? There's no good answer to that question, which means the answer is probably that they were never up to good in the first place. They were a WEF globalist entity involved in election interference, undisclosed campaign donations, and outright no goodness. And they would have gotten away with it if it weren't for Twitter and Rumble. Chris Pavlovsky, keep up the Lord's work, people. And if you like what I do, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. Drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. Make sure that you have notifications turned on. And then when I put out a video, you share it with someone who you think might like it. And especially with someone who you think would not like it. Most importantly, exercise, eat healthy, get sunlight, talk to people in real life. And now you know your vlog. Peace out, peeps. Booyah! Now I could keep you all day and I know that you're mildly busy, Chris. So up next, so you got the you got a, you got this stuff going on. Uh what else can you disclose uh, either for the first time or uh what do you want to let the public know of what's what Rumble is up to? Well, I just disclosed a bunch of emails today. So <laughs> <laughs> who's who's that? There so there are more to come. No, no, uh, I'm gonna keep it to these two. <laughs> Uh, maybe one more, but like I kind of described that one already on this show. Uh, the, yeah, I'm going to, I, I, I'm going to keep it to these and I, I, I will say I'll, I'll make the prediction that, you know, there's, there's definitely some dirty laundry as, uh, Elon Musk put it today on, uh, on, on X. Um, and, uh, I think that because there is, I, I think that, uh, just a little prediction of mine and completely my opinion and nothing else, but uh, I, I don't see Garm making its way to the end of the year. I, I, I think they know they're doing something illegal. And I think um, behind the scenes uh, they're, they're pretty freaked out about what's going on. And uh, I'd be surprised if they, if they want to, if they're still there um, by the end of the year, but uh, it's, it's pretty disgusting what we've seen. These emails are disgusting. Like if you look at them, I, I look at them and I'm like, crap, like the, these guys are asking us to change. No, but they want us to, to leave half of America so that we could get their ad dollars. No, it's, you're going nice to, you're going to change and you're going to change your policies and you're going to, you're going to need that other half of America because you're going to lose a lot of business if you treat and discriminate against half of America.